Hi everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to the Fragrant Bunker. Today we are touching base on my top five perfumes for the month of November. So I have them standing here in front of me. Uh, before I get into it, mm, you know, if you are a tier two member or patron, you also get access to a special video on my main channel, my Super Jacob channel, uh, where I will be live streaming uh, behind the top five perfumes for the month of November. Uh, where we get more psychological and underneath the skin of the choices that we <laughs> make uh, to select these perfumes. So having said that, subscribe to my channel and uh, you can also follow me on Patreon. Super Take of All Spelled Together there as well for extra perks such as this one. This video is being filmed live in front of a live virtual audience. I live stream every Saturday on my main channel. You're all invited to join me for the chats. I have my co-chatters here with me in the sidebar, so let's get straight to it. Listen, my top five for the month of November. It had to be, <laughs> it had to be Sycamore. I just got this one. Uh, it did not make it into my last month's uh, top five. Actually, the Pure Perfume did, but the Eau de Parfum didn't. And... I made the unboxing video and I was shocked. Like, why did I <laughs> fall in love with Yoda Parfum? I hated it since 2016, like all these years. And all of a sudden, they have reformulated it. They, they've tweaked something in it. It smells more similar to the Eau de Toilette, even though it's soft in a nice way. Uh, really, really beautiful. So, as I was saying, not sure um, why I'm so in love with this one. I think it is... The violet in here, maybe? I don't know. I, I kept saying I think there's orris root. But it could be the violet. But the thing is, there's a slight softness to this, which is different to the sharpness of the Eau de Toilette. So this one kind of delivers a, a less sharp, moody tone. However, it is very, very precise and, and sharp in its structure, but it kind of twirls a little bit around uh, that vetiver moment. Really, really interesting. So as you can see, I've been using it up. I mean, it's been only like a week or two and uh, so much is already gone, meaning that I'm really enjoying this one, but also I'm um, working on actually delivering a proper review, not just an unboxing of this one. And I got to say, there is a camphorous aspect to it, which I'm noticing more and more the more I wear it. Like, uh, almost like an indolic tuberose type of camphorous smell, which is similar to what you get when you smell tuberose criminelle, minus all the extra added pompous elements of Tuberus Criminelle by Serge Luton. This one is more, there's a slight camphor, like Tiger Balm vibe in here, which I'm noticing the more I'm using it. So very fascinating to, for me, it's going to be more fascinating, you know, to use up even more of this bottle and figure out even more all of the nuances before I can deliver a final verdict and proper review. But for now, definitely enjoying it in November, definitely using it on a daily basis. It's warm and cold at the same time, so it kind of works in colder days and in warmer days. And it's just an all-round, interestingly humid, but also dry smell. Beautiful. First thing to smell early in the morning. In fact, it's the first one from the selection. The second one is, a, if I want to perk up a little bit the, the, the tone and the vibe of the day, uh, and I, you know, I've November tends to be a little bit colder and maybe more damp and humid. And I kind of combat that uh, with something that actually in its own right is also kind of damp and humid. <laughs> but it's called Joy. So uh, Joy by Jean Patou, the I have here the Collector's Eau de Parfum edition. Uh, really living for this indolic beauty. The... I've just reviewed this one uh, a couple of days ago, so you can check out the video um, on my channel. But uh, it's an overdose of jasmine, right? Yasminum grandiflorum. Not the sandbag, but the actual day one, right? The, not the night one, the day one. 
And yes, as it dries out, because I've been spraying it and then like, you know, it dries up here on the nozzle. It, do it does turn poopy, you know, a little barnacle type of indolic smell. But when you spray it on the skin, it gives you a beautiful oily consistency. It kind of has a tendency of being more of an extra. Uh, the formulation is slightly different to the um, last version that we know of Joy before it was completely discontinued. So I've checked the back of the boxes of the both. They're slightly different in you know, the way that their ingredients are listed. But this one gives me a gorgeous, opulent jasmine vibe that um, some people say smells of old perfume. To me, it doesn't very very interesting how noses differ to me this one smells very futuristic very hyper modern avant-garde very much ahead of its time still today even though you you basically smell a very very strong jasmine there's other ingredients in here as well but it's a jasmine bomb like you can't it's 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 a jasmine bomb <laughs> so all the other ingredients in here are kind of struggling to to live as well because it's it is a jasmine bomb but it freshens the mood. It creates a zesty oomph moment when you put it on, especially in kind of when the days start getting shorter in November, everything gets darker. This is a weird contrast to it because there's a darkness in here as well. But then again, it's also a very, very energetic and, and light fragrance. So by light, I don't mean the fragrance is light. By light, I mean sunshine, rays of light penetrating through darkness and humidity. Very, very fascinating. Gorgeous for November. The next one, I have to say, I usually, well, I can't remember when was the last time I listed this in my top five perfumes for November, but it does have a tendency of being listed in my, I usually do gravitate or veer towards this one early autumn or late autumn. So it kind of makes sense that I'm listing it again. And that would be, Avignon by Comte des Garçons Incense, Encense or Incense Series 3. Avignon is a very soft incense. It also has a wetness to it. I mean, it's dry because it's incense, but there's a wetness to it that really, really matches nice foggy, moody days, cloudy days, gray skies. You're starting to wear more layers because it's getting colder outside. And then this one peps you up. It gives you warmth while acknowledging the cold and the grayness outside. So there's a cool aspect to this one, but at the same time, there's a cold aspect to it as well. It's a beautiful perfume. I love this in autumn. Really, really just gorgeous in autumn. So it's a great, great um, November fragrance for me. Number four, I'm really surprised how everything is, well, not everything, but how some of my perfume selections are mirrored from last month to this month, because I had Sycamore Parfum uh, in last month, and I have Eau de Parfum this month, and then I had last month Chance Extrait, and this month it's Chance Eau de Toilette. I love this one. Um, actually, the more I use it, the more I love it. It's I did not like this perfume for many, many years, decades, really, since it was released. And then all of a sudden I understood it. Like I got it. And when I once I got it, once you get Sean's, you love it. Um, there's that pineapple slash paper accord in here which I live for. And it's particularly prominent in the Eau de Toilette and in the Parfum. Not so much in the Eau de Parfum. So my favorite concentration would be the Extrait, but I'm enjoying the more pineapple-y nuances of the Eau de Toilette this month. Very, very much. Ah, oh, it's so good. I mean, let me spray it. Yeah. And it also gives me, 
like when it's freshly sprayed with with the aldehyde kind of zestiness in the opening it gives me barbershop vibes like i can see how sean's au fresh i see how au fresh was developed after this one like i can smell au fresh inside of this one in the og right Oh, but it's so beautiful. You know, Y2K era. Oh my gosh. This is the Y2K fragrance uh, in the best of ways. And there's a nostalgia to it as well. I think it's very time specific, but it's been around for such a long time that it has become its own creation. It's become a classic. However, when I smell this one, more so than when I smell Coco Mademoiselle, because Coco Mademoiselle also Y2K, but Coco Mademoiselle has been so popular that it's kind of transcended time and it's become its own thing. This one is still time specific, even though it's a classic, which is nothing wrong with that. You know, like number 19 is a very time specific perfume as well, but I, we still love it to bits, right? But it's a very 70s perfume. This is a very Y2K era. And the dry down is just heavenly. This is a beautiful perfume. I highly recommend it. Try it out, you guys. It's it's kind of one of those underrated Chanel perfumes. Not many people wear it nowadays because there's a lot of other Chanel perfumes to wear. And this one is kind of gone forgotten. It has its fans because once you're a fan of Chance, you're always a fan of Chance. So I wear this during the afternoon and early evening. Um... Because it makes me feel like, you know, how days are shorter, but it makes me feel like the day is a little bit more prolonged because of the happy, sunny vibe about this fragrance, the pineapple paper accord. Very interesting. The last one is uh, Kept for the Nights. The fifth one for November is Dior's... Dior Homme, Original, Eau de Toilette. This one is also kind of difficult to get nowadays because, I mean, they sell it in France. Uh, sometimes you can get it on Dior online, but it's usually never available online. Well, it's not available in stores anymore, just in a couple of stores in France. Otherwise, you can only get it online. Uh, the Original Eau de Toilette, right? Otherwise, there's the other new Demachi version of Dior Homme, which I don't care for. This is a beauty. Oh, man. That lipstick iris accord brings back really great memories. Uh, this is a beautiful fragrance. I'm so glad that it's not gone completely. There's still hope. We can still find it from time to time. And uh, Dior Homme Original is uh, just a beautiful iris a chord that is a very interesting approach to male perfumery. Um, Olivier Polge, before he went to Chanel, he actually did this one. <laughs> and there's Violet in here as well, which Olivier Polge reformulated Sycamore and did the Eau de Parfum. You know, they are different, but there you can see that the same nose did them. Very interesting that my first one is Sycamore and the last one is uh, Dior Homme Original. You know, I always say perfumes know no gender. So obviously male, female or whatever in between above or underneath you are. Um, uh, this is something that you can enjoy because there's something envelopingly airy uh, about it that is just so mesmerizing because it has a body it has substance but it manages to remain ethereal that's the beauty of Dior Homme. ethereal but also body at the same time uh that's the beauty of it and it's just Yes, also very Y2K era, very time specific, but it's beyond that. This one actually was way ahead of its time. It was so much way ahead of its time that a lot of men thought it smelled too feminine for them. It was kind of the beginning of more floral accords and iris accords for men. Um, so this one, this one was not successful everywhere. But now the time is right. This one is, 
and now we know that this one was so ahead of its time back then because it's 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 quite a complex perfume. Imagine this in the early 2000s in the perfume world that we were in in the early 2000s. This was like a game changer uh, in the best of ways, but the times were not ready for it. The times were still kind of locked into male cologne smelling of certain, you know, synthetics and, and um, citrusy notes, uh, bergamots, um, maybe a little bit of neroli, but usually pepper was in them um, or a lot of perfumes used the um, oh, I forgot the name the the anise seed uh, which is something that we also find in uh, in the 90s opium pour homme or black currant stuff like that and this one kind of changes the game in that respect and goes into this more delicate masculinity. This is the Dior Homme lines of Hedi Sliman, the silhouette that he created for men for Dior. And then this would uh, be launched together with or right in right after or in conjunction with the uh, Collection Privé range, which was first launched as a three Cologne fragrances, Cologne Blanche, Au Noir, Cologne Au Noir, and Cologne Bois d'Argent. Yeah, the metrosexual era says Caleb, right? So this is my number five. Um, I'm loving this combo. So Sycamore, Joy, Incense, Chanel Chance, and Dior Homme, l'original. Let me know your thoughts. What are your top five perfumes for the month of November in the comment section down below? And thank you so much for tuning in. Oh, Madame Ross says, my boyfriend loves it too. Wonderful lineup, says Audrey. Thank you so much. The guys went nuts on Fragrantico when they changed it. <laughs> No comment. Uh, Madame says, yes, love, 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 love wearing Dior Original. You see, it doesn't matter what gender you are. It always works. And um, it's pure beauty. Vintage Dior Original is a gorgeous iris. Really is. I bought a bottle of Dior Homme Original, says Apple Spritz. In Paris, it seems like it's only available in France. But you bought it in the stores. That's good to know that it's still available in the stores, in Paris at least. This combo has something for everyone, says RN. And with that, I bid you adieu. Thank you so much for watching. Never give up on loving. Subscribe.